Well, shalom, everybody. Welcome to our show today in Bible Prophecy Radio with August Rosado. It is good to have you with us on the program today. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. It is good to have you with us as we are coming to you live from Lincoln, Rhode Island. And uh, we are excited about the two topics that we have on today's program. And uh, folks, it's really exciting to come to you every single week with these uh, topics that were taken from Israel, the Middle East, and around the world. And as they are set on the stage for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Now, uh, on last week's show, it was not a live show. It was a pre-broadcast show when I interviewed uh, Donald Perkins from According to the Number Two, According to Prophecy Ministries. And uh, Brother Don is a black evangelist, very godly man, and uh, he knows Bible prophecy. And so I hope you enjoyed uh, last week's pre-recorded broadcast that we had with Don Perkins, and we're looking forward to having him on a future show. Well, I am coming to you, as I said, live from Lincoln, Rhode Island. Now, I would have been coming to you live from Dover, Foxcroft, Maine, where I was supposed to be preaching this weekend, Saturday through Tuesday, at the New Life Baptist Church for their Bible Prophecy Conference. And, of course, the pastor called and canceled and so uh, we do not have a, pre a church to preach at uh, Sunday, so that means we will be at home at our home church, the Greater Rhode Island Baptist Temple in Johnston, Rhode Island. Uh, and so, uh, you know, these things happen with the winter months up here in New England. We get these blizzards, we get these snowstorms, and of course we get this really frigid Arctic uh, cold weather. People get sick, they stay out of church and so on and so forth and of course you know that's the right thing to do if you're sick you know if you got a flu you don't want to bring that to the church because then you get everybody else sick and so uh, I, I can understand that and I can appreciate that and uh, we're really looking forward to being with uh, Pastor Dave Ireland and all of his fine people there at New Life Baptist Church but again you know the winter months can really you know, uh, just really have a uh, negative effect on a lot of attendance at church. And so, you know, we're hoping to be with them somewhere down the road. We were looking for another church for the Sunday that might be interested in having us in, but we know that it was, <clears throat> you know, it was sort of last minute. And so uh, we're, we're just going to be at our home church. But we will be back in Maine uh, next Sunday as I will be preaching at Fellowship Baptist Church in Augusta, Maine. And uh, we were with these fine people last year. Don Williams is the pastor. And uh, we're looking forward to being with them for an all-day Sunday prophecy uh, Sunday. And then, of course, uh, we'll be heading over to another church in Sebec, Maine. And uh, that will be at the Sebec Corner Baptist Church, where I will be preaching Saturday night and Sunday morning. So if you live anywhere in the area, uh, you can go to these churches and participate in the Prophecy Conference. We would love to meet you. And, of course, you can go to my website, which is www.todayinbibleprophecy.org. That's todayinbibleprophecy.org. And you can look up my uh, scheduled speaking events. Uh, I might be at a church near you. And so you can go to our website, look at my speaking calendar, and you can see where we are going to be. Now, we're coming to you uh, an hour earlier than what we usually do. Usually, we have a 3 p.m. Uh, radio start time, but today it is at 2 p.m. And so, of course, I sent that out on all of the uh, social networks. So I hope everybody got the memo uh, because, of course, I have a, an appointment uh, with my family in about another hour or so, my grandson's uh, birthday and the whole family's getting together. And so it's going to be at 3.30. And so we want to make sure that we left ourselves enough time to get there. So instead, uh, we come to you today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I want to appreciate each and every one of you that tune in every single week to this radio broadcast as we cover world events in light of biblical prophecy. 
I always take my news stories from secular Israeli or any type of secular media website because I want to make sure there's no bias there if you you know in, in a sense uh, you know if you get stories like this from prophecy websites they just you know they, they just make a mountain out of a molehill and we don't want to do that here at today in Bible prophecy ministries I want to take it right from the horse's mouth taking secular news stories from these media outlets and giving you my prophetic commentary on those news stories as we believe that it does relate to Bible prophecy and the soon return of the Lord Jesus in this next event we call on God's calendar the rapture of the church and of course uh, all of our radio shows we archive those shows on my website again today in Bible prophecy dot org and we also provide a live link on the website for you to click in to listen to the live show as you're doing right now but again folks uh, we came to a little bit earlier today because of the uh, uh, party for my grandson uh, later on and uh, so I mean some of the people are saying well why don't you just do it for 2.30 or, or maybe a little bit later and, you know we, we want to make it early because you know the weekends people just like doing things on the weekend and so we want to make it convenient for them to listen in to the show now folks you can stay connected with us by going to the social media networks you can find me on Facebook by simply going to August Rosado and uh, send me a Facebook friend request and you can keep up with what we're doing what's going on where we're going to be at next you can also find me on Twitter by simply going to Bible underscore prophecy or simply August Rosado and uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn just simply evangelist August Rosado and you can stay connected with me through those three social websites uh, if you have a prophecy question for today's program call me toll-free won't cost you a dime call me toll-free 877-659 excuse me 8944 877-659-8944 and that is a toll-free number across the United States 877-659-8944 if you would like to send an email question give me your first name only what state you're from and please make the question brief uh, you know for, for time's sake and my email is August dot today in Bible prophecy at gmail dot com and so if you are phone shy uh, you can send me your question via the email or again call in the toll-free number 877-659-8944 I also want to welcome those who watch via YouTube and even though it's not live on YouTube we uh, record the radio broadcast on blog talk radio here and I upload these radio programs to YouTube so if you don't know what I look like well you're really not missing much amen but uh, you can <laughs> you can watch uh, the archive on YouTube and of course the archive audio on my website today in Bible prophecy dot org and folks if you also would like a weekly CD of these radio programs for your gift of twenty dollars a month to this ministry we will send you a weekly CD of this broadcast so that you can play it at home uh, in your CD player in your car as you're going to work or whatever so that you could listen to these programs at your convenience and so that's something that you can uh, pray about right there if you are interested and you would like to have these shows 
mailed to your home, then again, go to the website, www.todayinbibleprophecy.org. Go to our online catalog. Click on the online catalog, and you'll see a weekly CD of the radio shows mailed to your home. You can click on the PayPal button and just give your information there, and we'll make sure that you start receiving these CDs on a weekly basis. For those of you who are churches that are listening to the show every single week, uh, please pray and consider, number one, about financially supporting us on a monthly basis to keep these radio shows uh, coming to you, and also consider and pray about inviting us to come to your church for a Bible prophecy conference. And so uh, we really would like to come and minister to your people. Again, go to my website and check out my uh, schedule of events and see if there is an open date that you would be interested in and having us come and visit your church. Again, if you're listening live, the toll-free number is 877-659-8944. And if you want to send an email question, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com. And again, I want to uh, thank those who watch via the YouTube. Uh, even though you're watching this on YouTube, it's not live. It is archived. Uh, the only way you can listen to this live is through the audio, as you're doing right now. But on YouTube, it's going to be archived. But I want to welcome all of the YouTube viewers and thank you so much for tuning into the show. Now, before I get to the first news article, don't forget also, folks, that we are one month away from our Bible prophecy tour to Israel. We have about four seats left on the tour. We only take about 15 people with us. We have about four seats left on the tour. And we like taking small groups because we want to make it personal for everybody, make new friendships, get to do more, and, uh, of course, see more. Uh, with a smaller group. And so we have four seats left. We just had a lady just prior to today's broadcast uh, sign up to come with us to Israel. If you are interested and you want to come with us to the Holy Land where I will be teaching Bible prophecy on location, then again, send me an email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com, and I will make sure that I send you an, a brochure of the itinerary of the tour via an email attachment to you. You can download that and you can print it out or just read it on the computer. Or you can call our tour operator, Christian Tours to Israel. Ask for my tour agent, Eyal Evan. Their toll-free number is one 888 300 that's one 888 Again, ask for Eyal Evan. His name is spelled E-Y-A-L. And the last name E-V is in Victor. A-N as in Nancy. Eyal Evan. Let him know you would like to join me, August Rosado, on the Bible Prophecy Tour to Israel. Ten days in the Holy Land. And when it's all said and done, folks, you will not read that Bible the same way again. And I say this all the time, and I'll continue to say it. If we get raptured in Israel, it's only going to be a domestic flight. So we'd love to have you join us for this Bible prophecy tour of Israel. What I want to do right now is get to the first news story of the day. And, uh, of course, um, this, of course, came from the Israeli uh, Channel 7 uh, website. And, again, uh, more propaganda is coming out of the Palestinian Authority. And the Palestinian Authority is saying that Israel is a racist state that should be punished. Now, folks, is Israel a racist state that should be punished? 
Well, Palestinian Authority Chief Negotiator Saeed Erika made a statement that Israel is a racist regime that should be punished. He said, and I quote, the world should rise against the racist regime, end quote. Now, during a meeting, there was a heated argument between Erika and Israel Justice Minister Zippy Livni, who is the negotiator on behalf of Israel with the Palestinian Authority. Now, this all happened during the Munich Security Conference. The heated argument was due to Livni's insistence that the Palestinian Authority recognize Israel as a Jewish state. The Palestinian Authority and its president, Mahmoud Abbas, he's also known as Abu Mazen, said they will never recognize Israel as a Jewish state as part of any future agreement. Now, the Palestinian Authority accuses Israel of being a racist state, but yet the Palestinian Authority will not recognize the Jewish character of the state of Israel. Now folks, who is being racist here? Erika made the statement, and again I quote from him, I told her, talking about Zippy Livni, I told her in front of the whole world that we will not change our history, our religion, or our civilization. End quote. He went on to say, quote, we are the lawful sons of Palestine. We will not accept Israel as a Jewish state. End quote. He went on to make this absurd statement where he said again, and I quote, I informed Livni that Israel must apologize for Palestinian refugees because they weren't displaced by a volcano or a tsunami, but by the establishment of Israel. They should apologize to them and solve their issue on the basis of the Arab Peace Initiative and international decisions. Now folks, is what he's saying true? Was the reestablishment of the state of Israel the, the uh, basis for kicking the Palestinians out of Israel? We'll see about that. But he continued, and, I, and he said this, and I quote, Livni accused us of not wanting peace, and I told her that Israel is racist against Palestinians in ways that did not happen in South Africa, talking about the apartheid. The world should rise against this racist regime hold it accountable, and punish it, end quote. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Erika charged that the Palestinians were displaced by the creation of the state of Israel. Folks, here are the facts. When Israel was reborn, May the 14th of 1948, as foretold, by the way, by the Jewish prophets, <clears throat> they were attacked by five Arab armies. The moment the British pulled out, they were attacked by five Arab armies. The Arab leaders, prior to this attack on Israel, the Arab leaders told those Arabs living in the land at that time, and folks, by the way, the Arabs living in Israel uh, prior to 1948 and during 1948 never referred to themselves as Palestinians. That term came up in 1964 under Yasser Arafat's PLO. But those Arab leaders, prior to the attack on Israel, told those Arabs they needed to flee their homes until they crushed the infant state of Israel. And Arakat seems to ignore this fact. When these Arab armies lost to Israel, after promising those Arabs that they could return to their land after they destroyed the Jews, they were displaced. 
not by Israel, but by their own Arab leaders who gave them a bunch of promises and never kept those promises. Another piece of fact that Arakat ignores is that prior to the attack on Israel with the War of Independence 1948 is that Israel offered those Arab people full citizenship with all right to stay in the land under a new Jewish state. <clears throat> Why did they refuse? They refused because they were influenced by propaganda that the Jews would come in and kill them all. But again, folks, uh, Arakat seems to ignore all of these facts. Israel is not responsible for the displacement of these Arab refugees. The Arab world itself is responsible. They are using the plight of these refugees and their suffering <clears throat> as a tool to demonize Israel. If they are so concerned about the suffering of their fellow Arabs, then why don't these Arab nations take them in? They won't because they use it as political propaganda. How unfortunate that is. Erekat mentioned South Africa, implying that Israel is an apartheid state. <clears throat> Again, folks, it's more propaganda. Arabs who have citizenship in Israel are called Arab Israeli or Israeli Arabs with full rights as well as voting rights. You even have Arabs who sit in the Israeli Knesset with full voting rights. So how can you accuse Israel of being apartheid? But yet, the Palestinian Authority said, if they have a state, there will not be one Jew living in a Palestinian Authority state. So folks, who is guilty of apartheid here? Who is the racist here? What is absolutely comical, I have to say, is that Erekat said the reason why the Palestinian Authority won't recognize Israel as a Jewish state is because, this is, this is hilarious, the Palestinians are descendants of the Canaanites and they were in the land 5,500 years ago before Joshua ben Nun came in and burned my home city of Jericho. Well, he just put his foot in his mouth because Joshua led the Israelites into the land of Canaan at around 1410 B.C. So that's before 5500, which shows the Jews were already in the land. But, for the sake of argument, if the Palestinians were descendants of the Canaanites, my question to Erekat would be, which part of the Canaanites do you belong to? <clears throat> if you're a descendant of the Canaanites, then which part of the Canaanites do you belong to? Do you belong to the Hittites? Do you belong to the Amorites? Do you belong to the Jebusites? Do you belong to the Hivites? Do you even belong to the Mosquito Bites? I mean, where do you belong if you're part of the Canaanites? The Canaanites were a conglomeration of nations in Canaan during that time with Hazor as the Canaanite capital. And it was God himself who told Joshua to destroy these wicked people from off the land. Now, Erekat said Israel should be held accountable by the international community and should be punished, not just condemned and denounced, but he's saying that Israel should be punished. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, is he calling for action against the state of Israel, whether it's military action or UN sanctions? He's not being clear. But what I know is clear, folks, is that Bible prophecy calls for action. Heavenly divine punishment 
against the future descendants of Esau. Erekat says <laughs> the Palestinians are descendants of the Canaanites. But again, my question to him would be, which one? Erekat does not know his own history and is ignorant of the Bible. The Bible describes the family tree of Esau leading up to a people called today the Palestinians. Now, Jimmy D. Young of Prophecy Today did a great study on this. In Genesis chapter number 36, it describes the descendants of Esau. But in verse 12, it mentions Esau's grandson, who would be a staunch enemy of Israel. And his name was Amalek. Amalek was Esau's grandson, according to Genesis chapter 36 and verse number 12. But yet in Exodus chapter number 17, we see Esau's grandson Amalek at war with Israel. We also find a descendant of Amalek in 1 Samuel chapter number 15. And we see Amalek's descendants at war with Israel. In 1 Samuel 15, we see Israel at war with Agag the Amalekite. So we know that Agag was a descendant of Amalek. So Agag the Amalekite, who the Jewish prophet Samuel kills. Because it was God that told Israel's first king Saul to slay all these people, including the king. But we all know that Saul did not listen. And of course Samuel saying you can't send a boy to do a man's job. And of course the Jewish prophet Samuel goes in and he kills Agag. But we also find another enemy of Israel in the book of Esther, chapter number 3. A notorious anti-Semite who sought to hang all the Jews of Persia, a descendant of Agag. And he is called, in Esther chapter 3, verse 1, Haman the Agagite. Haman was an Agagite, a descendant of Agag, 1 Samuel chapter 15. And he was an Amalekite who was a descendant of Amalek, Exodus chapter 17, the grandson of Esau, Genesis chapter 36, and verse number 12. However, we find another despot in the New Testament who sought to kill all the people in Israel from three years old and under, all those children at that time, and he wanted to kill the newborn king of the Jews. This man was a great, great descendant of Haman, and he is called Herod the Great. Herod was a descendant of Esau. He was an Edomite because Herod's father, Antipater, was an Edomite. Herod was an Edomite. Genesis chapter 36 and verse number 8 says, Esau is Edom. And in Genesis chapter 36 and verse number 9, it says, Esau the father of the Edomites. So Herod is a descendant of Esau. He was an Edomite. But when the Nebataeans of Arabia, today Saudi Arabia, invaded Edom, many Edomites were killed, and those who escaped fled over the border to southern Judea. And those Edomites in southern Judea became known as Edomians. Edomian is a corruption of two words, Edom and Judea. So they became known as Edomians, Edomians, if you will. But here's what's interesting. When the Romans destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, many of those Edomites fled to what is today Bosnia. Bosnia has a distance of 1,239 miles north of Jerusalem. During World War II, Hitler invites to Germany the Grand Mufti of the Middle East, Hajj Amman el Husseini. And they both talk about, well, what else? Killing Jews. Hitler encourages Husseini to go to Bosnia to gather a massive Arab army and bring them to the Middle East with the intent 
of killing the Jewish people. And Al Husseini had a nephew. His name is Yasser Arafat. So folks, here is the Edomite family tree. We have Esau, Genesis chapter 36, verses 8 and 9. Esau, who is Edom, the father of the Edomites. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we have Amalek, Esau's grandson. Genesis chapter 36, and verse number 12. The same Amalek is warring with Israel in Exodus chapter number 17. And of course, he loses. Then we have, uh, excuse me, Agag, the Amalekite, who is a descendant of Amalek. Okay, he's killed by the Jewish prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 15. Then we have Agag's descendant, Haman, the Agagite, Esther chapter 3 verse 1. Then we have Herod the Great, of course we all know what he did. Then we have the Idumeans. Then we have Haj Aman al Husseini. And we have Yasser Arafat. And folks, who is left today? Well, who we have left today is the Palestinians of today. Now, folks, <clears throat> Bible prophecy calls for the destruction of these people who seek to kill the Jews and take the land away from them. Ezekiel chapter 35 tells us God will judge the Palestinians. Verse 5 says God will punish these people because of their perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Look at all the terrorist attacks that were perpetrated by the Palestinian Authority Hamas, of course, in the Gaza Strip. Ezekiel 35, verse 5 says, God will judge and punish these people because of their perpetual, their everlasting hatred, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Genesis chapter 35, and verse number 10 says, because they have said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we shall possess it. That's what the Palestinian Authority is calling for today. Um, everyone's talking about a, a two-state solution, Palestine and Israel. But the Palestinians are saying these two nations, Palestine and Israel, will be ours. They don't want peace with Israel. They don't want the P-E-A-C-E. -E. They want the P-I-E-C-E. -E. They want a piece of the whole kitten caboodle. But we also find in Obadiah verses 17 through 21, it says that God will destroy the Palestinians and their goal will never be achieved. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, it says, and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble. That's Obadiah verse 18. We also find in Malachi chapter 1 and verse number 4, it says the Palestinians say, we are impoverished, meaning we are poverty stricken. We're deprived of natural rich, uh, richness and strength. And this is what the Palestinian Authority is accusing Israel of today. They accuse Israel of sabotaging the Palestinian Authority economy despite Israel giving money to them. Again, folks, it's propaganda. So they says we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. But God says those borders that the Palestinians are seeking for today, God says those borders are the borders of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. The Hebrew word for forever is the Hebrew word olam. It means eternal meaning God has eternal indignation against these people. <clears throat> when Arakat says that Israel is a racist state that needs to be punished, reminds me, folks, that Bible prophecy will be fulfilled when God will punish the future descendants of Esau. 
the Palestinians of today with eternal destruction when they seek to kill the Jews and take the land and have their own borders. That's what they call them for. They want their own borders. But Malachi 1.4 says they're nothing more than the borders of wickedness. This story reminds you and I that Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. Jesus is coming soon. And folks, it could be today. What a remarkable story, folks. And again, it's, it's just propaganda. Now listen, I am, I am not anti-Arab. You know, the Lord Jesus died on the cross for the sins of both Jew and Gentile. And he died on the cross for the sins of all the Arabs as well. But the Bible is very, very clear that those Arabs in the future will attempt to annihilate Israel and take the land from the Jews. And the Bible says that's not going to happen, folks. When you read Psalm 83, uh, Ezekiel 38, 39, Daniel 11, 40 through 44, it's very clear that that will not happen. And Joel chapter 3 verse 2 makes it clear that God will not tolerate anyone dividing the land of Israel. Before I get to the next uh, question, I have a prophecy question from Haley. Uh, this is an email question, and she's out of West Virginia. I preached at her church a couple of weeks ago in Stonewood, West Virginia, uh, Bible Baptist Temple. And her question is this. So may I ask how to interpret 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 1 through 12? In accordance with imminence, Paul writes that, uh, that we be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter asked from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. And she emphasized that, the day of Christ is at hand. In verse 1, Paul clearly is writing to the brethren about the coming of Jesus, and I will gather together unto him. Then Paul says, that day shall not come except A and B happen. Isn't Paul still writing about the day of the Lord and the rapture day? Well, while I strongly believe, Haley, in the doctrine of imminency, meaning that the Lord can come at any moment without warning, without anything having to be fulfilled. The passage of 2 Thessalonians proves a pre-tribulation rapture. The purpose of Paul's writing of this second epistle was to comfort the church in regards to the coming of the Lord, not to terrify the church. Paul in chapter 1 reminds the church of the Lord's coming and our gathering to him. This would be the rapture. In verse 2, Paul addresses the problem of someone who forged a letter in the name of the apostle claiming the church was already in the day of the Lord. So the church wasn't comforted by that. They were terrified by that. He then warns in verse 3 against deceivers who are trying to beguile the church and makes his argument that the church is not in the day of the Lord and will not be. Paul gives the characteristics of the day of the Lord. And in verse 3, he says, these things are not happening now. He said, the day of the Lord will not come until we see a fallen away first. The word fallen away is the Greek apostasia, which we get the English word apostasy. And we're seeing that right now. Paul says there must first be the apostasy before the man of sin can be revealed. There is apostasy in the church and outside the church. It means to turn away from the truth. In verse 4 he talks about the Antichrist who will come on the scene after the fallen away period which we see now in the church age because of course we are in the church age. Now some say that the fallen away refers to the rapture. I would disagree. The church will be caught up not fall away. The church will be caught up. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.17. The church will be caught up not fall away so it can't refer to the same event. In verses 6 and 7, Paul speaks of the restraining power of the Holy Spirit that holds back the full force of evil from covering the earth and the Antichrist being revealed. In verses 8 and 10, Paul says, when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, it doesn't say taken out of the world, it says taken out of the way, verse 7, then shall that wicked Antichrist be revealed. So it's the Holy Spirit now who restrains the Antichrist and the full force of evil from coming on the earth right now because the rapture hasn't happened yet. 
He can't be revealed now because the church has not been evacuated. And we are right now in that fallen away period, not the day of the Lord. Those in the church age, present now, who hear the gospel and reject it, will not have that opportunity in the tribulation period to get saved. That's in verses 11 through 12. And it says, God, not Satan, not the beast, not the false prophet, but God himself will send a strong delusion upon these unregenerate in the tribulation period to believe the lie of the beast and be damned. Paul is not writing about the day of the Lord and the rapture day as being one and the same. He makes a very clear and unambiguous distinction of the church age and the day of the Lord. One piece of advice, Haley, I would stop listening to these people like Anderson and his after the tribulation video uh, that teaches a post-tribulation rapture view and, and these people who are teaching pre-rap views. Listen, not everybody can be right. They are confusing people and they're teaching false doctrine due to their uh, allegorical interpretation of the prophetic scriptures. We should take the Bible for its plain sense, literal meaning. If the plain sense makes sense, don't look for any other sense or you will end up with nonsense. And believe me, there is a lot of nonsense out there, Haley, when it comes to the teaching of Bible prophecy. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. It doesn't need your help, my help, or anyone else's help. It stands on its own. So uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but I'm very uh, passionate uh, about this, folks. And so we need to be very careful. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. Uh, looking at it from a historical, grammatical, and, of course, a literal interpretation. Well, let me get to the next news story right here. This one's interesting. The right-wing rabbis in Israel are threatening U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry with a curse. A group of Orthodox rabbis in Israel have threatened U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry with a divine curse from heaven. If he continues to push for a two-state solution and a so-called quote-unquote peace agreement with Israel and the Palestinians. These rabbis also compared Kerry to two of Israel's ancient enemies, General Titus of the Romans, and of course the man I mentioned in the last new story, Haman the Agagite. The rabbis wrote an open letter to Kerry in which they said, and I quote, <clears throat> your uh, efforts to expropriate integral parts of our holy land and hand them over to Abbas terrorist gang amount to a declaration of war against the creator and ruler of the universe, end quote. <clears throat> now these rabbis call themselves SOS Israel, in which they want to save the people and the land of Israel. The rabbis continue to write, and I quote, if Kerry persists, in his destructive path, he will achieve everlasting disgrace in Jewish history for bringing calamity upon the Jewish people, like Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonians, of course, and Titus, who destroyed, respectively, the first and second great temples and the entire holy city of Jerusalem, and who, by heavenly punishment, brought eventual disaster upon themselves, too. End quote, according to the letter. The letter went on to say, and I quote, By the power of our holy Torah, we admonish you to cease immediately all efforts to achieve these disastrous agreements in order to avoid severe heavenly punishment for everyone involved, end quote. Now the SOS Israel group was founded in 2003 with the goal of frustrating the secular Israeli government or foreign governments for that matter, of trying to divide the land of Israel. Their goal is to agitate anyone who seeks division of the holy land and the holy places. Now folks, Bible prophecy calls for an end time scenario that calls for God's judgment on the nations who come against Israel. These rabbis in their letter also gave Kerry one final warning, and I quote, Haman contrived a vicious plot but he and his sons eventually were hung on the very same gallows he had prepared for Mordecai the Jew. For concerning those who work against us, 
The Bible promises, and they use Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5, to conspire a plan, and it will, it will be frustrated. Talk the talk, and it will not be fulfilled, because God is with us. I think they meant to put Isaiah 9, 6 there. Now, folks, we know from the story of Esther that Haman devised to kill all the Jews in Persia and constructed gallows to hang the Jews, and he himself was hanged, which is the reason why today the Jews celebrate Purim, which happens every March. Now, Titus, the Roman general, brought the 10th Roman legion into Jerusalem and destroyed the city along with the Second Temple. Now, according to the Jewish historian Josephus Flavius, over one million Jews died according to that campaign, and the rest were scattered globally. To compare Kerry to Haman and Titus is very strong words. But God made it abundantly clear that he will punish those who seek to divide the land God gave to his chosen people. On January the 4th, on our radio show, I spoke on the death of Ariel Sharon. And I compared the ancient kings of Israel and their spiritual lapse of judgment that led to the, to the destruction of the nation, both the northern and southern kingdoms. I also gave some modern day examples of Israeli prime ministers who attempted to divide, to divide the land and it was met with serious consequences. Again, go to our January 4th archive show and you can listen to that or if you're interested in receiving uh, the CD of that, we can also send that to you as well. And so God says he will punish those nations who seek to divide the land and annihilate the Jewish people. Haman was met with catastrophe when he tried to kill the Jews. The Roman Empire declined in 473 AD and lost all of its military might and splendor. The Jewish prophet Isaiah prophesied of God's judgment on the nations and on human rebellion and arrogance upon godless nations who rebel against God and against his son, the Lord Jesus. That's a prophecy, folks, out of Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's Hebrew, Mashiach, where we get the English word Messiah. And against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. But he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Isaiah lists these nations that God will punish. Nations he have already punished and nations he will punish in the future. And Isaiah lists these nations in Isaiah chapter 13, Isaiah chapter 14, Isaiah chapter 15, Isaiah chapter 17, Isaiah chapter 18, Isaiah chapter 19, Isaiah chapter 21, chapter 22, chapter 23, chapter 24. Read those passages on your own and you will see how God will judge those very nations who come up against Israel. As I stated in Joel chapter 3 verse 2, it says God will plead on behalf of Israel against those who divide the land, who try to take the land away from the Jewish people. Joel 3 is a judgment on the nations. In Amos chapters 1 and 2, we see God's judgment on the nations. In Obadiah, as I talked about in the last segment, we see God's judgment on the future descendants of Esau, the Palestinians of today, in verses 17 through 21 of Obadiah. In Ezekiel 35, we talked about God's judgment again on the future descendants of Esau the Palestinians, and also as I, I stated in Malachi chapter number 1, in Zephaniah chapters 1 and 2, we see the day of the Lord's wrath and the scope of divine judgment on the nations. Zechariah chapter number 9 speaks of God's wrath on Israel's neighbors. In the book of Revelation, we see God pouring out 21 judgments on the earth, on these nations, the seven seal judgments, the seven trumpet judgments, and the seven vial or bowl judgments. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 8, it speaks of one-fourth of humanity perishing during the seal judgments. In Revelation 9, 15, it talks about a third of mankind being killed through the trumpet judgments. And we're not even at the vile judgments yet in Revelation chapters 15 and 16. In Isaiah chapter 24, verse 6, it says this, 
therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. But the good news is that Jesus will return at the space of three and one half years and put an end to the carnage of the tribulation period. If Jesus did not come back by the space of three and a half years at the end of the seven year period of tribulation, he said in Matthew 24, 22, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. If Jesus did not come back at the end of the tribulation period, Folks, no one on earth will be left alive. If he did not return by tribulation's end, there will not be left anyone living on earth to populate the millennial kingdom. Jesus will set up his kingdom in Jerusalem with Israel at the head of the nations. That's Ezekiel chapter 5 and verse number 5. So folks, with the rabbis of Israel threatening U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry with a heavenly divine curse for pushing for a so-called peace deal with the Palestinian Authority and a so-called two-state solution reminds me of God's future wrath on the nations who seek to destroy Israel. Folks, Bible prophecy will be fulfilled and the rapture of the church could happen at any time moment. And folks, past experience, the nations of the world, including America, simply does not learn its lesson. God has brought down major world empires in the past. I'll name them for you. Assyria, Egypt, Babylonians, Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, I mean, we can go on and on and on and on. God brought down these major empires. They don't exist anymore. Why? Because of what they tried doing to Israel. And folks, we find in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, what God said, I will bless those who bless Israel, and I'll curse those who curse Israel. So you better be careful, because that was part of the Abrahamic covenant that God made with Abraham and his future descendants, the Jewish people. How do I know it's with the Jewish people? Well, when God told Abraham, I will establish my covenant not with Ishmael, but with Isaac, Yitzhak in Hebrew. So we know that in Genesis 12, God says, I'll bless those who bless your descendants, Abraham, and I will curse those who curse your descendants. Even modern day despots, modern day dictators who hated Jews and even killed Jews are long gone. Hitler, Saddam Hussein, they're long gone. The guy from uh, Libya, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, where is he today? So don't curse the Jews because you're looking for trouble doesn't matter who you are. God will not tolerate it. But I do know this, folks. That Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 28, that when you see these things begin to come to pass, when you see Bible prophecy being fulfilled in its early stages, he tells us to look up and lift up our heads for your redemption draweth nigh. When Jesus returns, millions and millions of people worldwide will meet him in the air at the rapture. But at the same time, millions upon millions of people will be left behind. And you do not want to be left behind when Jesus comes back. Because you don't want to be on this earth when that terrible seven years of tribulation hits this planet. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 calls it a time of Jacob's trouble. Not the church's trouble. It's a time of Jacob's trouble. It has everything to do with Israel and not with the church. 
Jesus said in Matthew 24, 21, For then shall be great tribulation. John the Apostle, Revelation 7, 14, he says, Great tribulation. And you don't want to be left behind. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, I'm here to tell you this today. As you're listening to this show or you're watching the archive here on YouTube, you are either one heartbeat away from going to hell or you're one trumpet sound away from being left behind. Probably just to end up in hell. Today you have hope. And that hope is the Lord Jesus. Jesus did not come to give you and I religion or to have some religious hierarchy ruling over us. He came to give you and I eternal life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, The thief cometh not, that's the devil, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus wants to give you eternal life. He wants to save you from your sins. Would you let him do that today? He waits for an invitation. Revelation 3.20 says he's standing at the door and he's knocking, waiting for an invitation for you to open the door of your heart and have him come into your life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, just say this simple prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. You must repent of your sins. Repentance means change of heart, change of mind, change of attitude. You must repent. You must acknowledge that you are a sinner worthy of death. We all are. But you must repent of your sins. All you have to do is say something like this. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you shed your precious blood for me. You were buried, and three days later you rose from the dead. And I know you promised that you're going to one day come back. Lord, I repent of my sins today. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Wash my sins away with your precious blood. I give my life to you, Jesus, today. Would you come into my life? Would you come into my heart? Forgive me of all my sins. And I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. And I receive your free gift, Lord, of eternal life. I deserve to go to hell. We all do. But Lord, I fall on your mercies. And I ask you to save me today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, I want to hear from you. Again, send me an email. August.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com Let me know you trusted in the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. I want to send you some free literature in the mail to help you in your new walk with the Lord Jesus and direct you to a good local Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church in your area where you can grow in the grace of God and where you can fellowship with other believers and, and just let God work through your very life. So, again, if you're interested in wanting to come to Israel with us, again, send me an email, august.todayinbibleprophecy at gmail.com, and I will send you the brochure uh, attachment. You can check it out, look it over, and has all the itinerary, the cost, all that there. We have four seats left, folks, four seats left, and I hope that you take advantage of those seats. We'd love to have you come to Israel with us. If you're interested and you want me to come and speak at your church, again, the same email. You can contact me and I, with your phone number information, and I'll get in contact um, with you. Again, visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Check out our online catalog. We've got all kinds of goodies there that I know will be a blessing uh, to you. Find me on Facebook. Find yeah. me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Until next week, this is August Rosado saying keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Maranatha, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom.
Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Bye-bye.